Thanks for watching, everyone. It's just screen. Screen. Um, you can see the screen, right? So it's just a, another slide just to give you some information about the Redash source code. So if you manage to install it, this would be the Redash uh, official code, the source code is this one. There's a lot of files like Streamlit, uh, mainly there is a front end and a back end, which contain all the codes that is involved with the Redash dashboard. So uh, let's just go back to the slide. Well, uh, from the source code, the front end part, just a note that it's created by React framework and the back end is done with the Python Flask framework. And then the other things, there are packages, how you install package on the resource code. For the back end, they have used the Poetry tool like PIMP, uh, sorry, PIMP, PIP, Anaconda uh, is similar to like those. And for the research source code, they are using Poetry. So make sure to install it on your system. So if there's any package that you want to install, like OpenAI language, you will need to have Poetry working on the source code. So to install Poetry, they are using particularly this version. So make sure to install this version. If you install the latest one, it will throw an error. So make sure to install this version of Poetry and everything that you install after that, you would say Poetry add, open AI language chain, any package you want to install and you can access it from the source code. For the front-end applications, they have used the Yarn. So instead of NPM, it's Yarn, they use the Yarn tool. So make sure uh, during the installation of Redash, you will probably will install the Yarn package here install here. So if you follow this step, you, are, you will install it. So you don't have to, because you will going to be installed it here, you don't have to reinstall it again. So for any front end package you want to add to the research, research source code, just say yarn add and add in package. Just these are just few pointers I want to mention. Now we can go back to the code. So the front end code, specifically, you will find it uh, before showing you the source code. Uh, I think uh, we, sh we should go back to the reduction installation because uh, the reduction installation does need a good internet connection. And some of the installation, we install them for the first time, it will take time. So while we the installation is made, we can go back to the source code. and see the source code. So before that, I already did these steps. I'm going to consider that you have a working do Docker, uh, but the, if the Docker is giving too much trouble, don't waste much time. Just re uninstall everything the Docker from your, this is specifically I'm talking for Linux operating system users. Uh, for Windows, there's an installation, a guide through that. It will, uh, I haven't tried the Windows part. So if you insist on using Windows, uh, make sure to go to this link and figure it out, okay? But for the others who are working on the Linux operating system, uh, just start from the scratch. If the Redash installation is uh, making too much, uh, killing too much time, just uninstall everything and you, there's a guideline to install Docker. Just install it through these two commands, specify the Docker group, that's by three commands, you will have a Docker. After you install this without error, go to the other steps, all the commands, make sure to run them all. So it runs them all, then finally, after you run the yarn, there will be the Redash repo or code. Make sure to clone it and then run yarn, which I am currently have done here. I'm on this step, so we're going to continue with this one. 
me. So uh, this is pretty much the thing that you have to do. And for and stop right here. Okay, don't install the commands below here. This one and set up item for local backing. You don't have to do that. Just uh, once you see this one, you can uh, the redash is installed successfully. So I'm just gonna run this make build. But before I think I do that, yeah, let me just. So I'm in this step. So while this one is running, we can see the source code. So on the client folder is where you find all the front end codes that are uh, that exist for creating this uh, Redash front end application is found. All these codes, these commands, everything, the icons, everything you will find in the components that are exist in the client folder will all the course for the front end React application is found. So in the app folder, you can find all the components. So you can explore, you can change things and just try to see the, how, what kind of change you can make on the Redash. But since that's not our focus, I'm gonna leave the exploration to you, but these are where the, all the front end commands, components are found. Uh, other than this one, they have used Cypress for testing, the other thing for React app testing, they have used Cypress, which you can see here. Here, it's just a more professional testing tool, which you can explore for yourself again. Uh, so you can see it here. And for styling, they have used the less key on the styles. You can see the less CSS styles. It's another styling sheet type. It's uh, it's under the CSS style sheet. That's another form of writing the style, uh, styling your application. So they have used zealous styling sheet. Uh, it's just the structure is the one style that's different. Other than that, it's a uh, CSS language. So if you are comfortable with CSS, it will not be that much hard to capture how less works. Just less makes you, gives you additional functional less importing another CSS to, uh, to another CSS file has this important function we do in Python module. The less CSS will give you less functionality. You can import another CSS file and access any of the functionalities in another CSS file import. There are different additional functions you can find by using less. So what's less? Again, you can uh, research on that. So my build is successful. The next command is make compose build, I think. Yeah, compose build. Okay, well, let me try. Okay, now, uh, I think we set it up for the React front end. For the back end, you're gonna find the back end code for the Redash here on the Redash uh, folder. Under the Redash folder, there are different uh, folders for different purposes. Uh, there's on the hundreds, there are different embedded uh, functionalities that, that you see for the Redash source of code, like this one, connecting to different data sources, Postgres, MongoDB, different database sources, uh, creating a first dashboard. This all have a backend API that you access when you try to create a new data source and stuff like that. So uh, all these codes are found on the backend, which you can find on the handlers folder. Um, almost all of them exist as a functionality, uh, which you can go ahead and discover. It's a Python and Flask Python code. I think by now you already are familiar with that one. Uh, there is an API, which is where it can guide you where each connection is Excel here on the API part. You can see here, for example, at the alert. So if you want to set up an alert or if you want the query, uh, when you click it, it will 
uh, fetch some when you create an alert you will you will say create uh, if i click it it will uh, since i'm not running my make down yet this will feel is just uh, before run it redash web server okay so if i just refresh it i will put the ui so i'm not gonna click anything until we finish with this one so anyway the point that i want to make was uh, when you click the alert and create a new alert the logic the how web to applications what would be some kind of request will be sent to the back end and the data will be fetched and you will create a new alert right so this is the urls for the back end to access the back end are specified on the api.py file so api.alerts are these urls are called on the front end on the client side and when this particular api urls are called this particular back end code is going to be called so when the api the api slash alert url slash add is clicked this particular back end code will run and it will return output to the front end there are different functionality they will be called and the front end will access the response and display it for you on the web server that is how a normal full stack, full stack application work right we have seen this before is that a question? Mm -hmm. Okay, I'll work on. Uh, yes, uh, sorry to interrupt, but uh, does that mean uh, we, we don't have to use the Docker installation? Do we have to install it locally? I, I'm, I'm a little bit conscious. We, we do need the Docker installation. I'm showing you Redash installation with Docker. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm confused with the question. This particular guide of Redash installation does need Docker on your system. Okay, maybe uh, I joined uh, two minutes late, I guess, two or two minutes. Maybe okay, so right. you have a Docker installation, uh, Walker, right now on your system? Uh, yeah, it's, uh, Redash is working. On is, is working? Yes. Yeah, so in, in that case, you don't have to worry about this step. you just going to... Uh, Follow me uh, from adding the add-on to your Redash. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, just for those of you who have problem with Docker and haven't done the Redash installation, follow this ish command. It should work. Okay, so here I'm just, uh, okay, let me just, so the makeup compose build has, has uh, finished, there is no error. The next step I'm gonna do would be uh, start the, my Docker image for the Redash. So if your installation is correct, when you run this after the compost build, you should see all the image of the Redash, the worker, the server, the scheduler. If they are exist, it means almost the installation is correct. Now let's just say make up and install the restart the image. So anyway, uh, here I'm just showing you uh, how the full stack work on the Redash source code. So the APIs for each component is specified on the API.py file. So if you have any kind of function that you want to add on, add on, you have to specify the URL to access the backend here in the API.py file. But this is where you make the connection. I'm going to show you this with the add-on also. How I can make uh, how, how I can I make it connected with the front end and back end to return a response. Uh, so once this is where you will see that one and for connecting the front end with the back end URL or on the client folder under the app components area here. No, not this one. On the service, yeah. the service folder is where all the Axios connection with the backend exists. So on the Axios .js, Axios, we already seen in the Book Zero tutorial, is a package to connect package to connect the backend and frontend. So it's already been installed. So all you have to do is whatever that you are going to access from your backend to here. For example, for the alerts. 
So if you can see it here, the URL are specified. Those are already being specified on the Flux Plus backend. So automatically you can access it. So how the, the React is reading this data, you have to, you can explore. If you are already familiar with React, it should be easy. Wait, this is how, anyway, in general, the source code is reading each other from the back in the front end, uh, displaying the all the queries, giving you the queries data, this, uh, displaying for you a visual representation here. This is how the source code is doing this application visible to users. Okay, so I hope this gives you an overview of the source code. Now we can go ahead with the installation. Now let's just refresh it. Okay. Since I, if you see this particular web server, it means your installation of Redux is successful. Just now give some information here. It can be anything. There is a rule and just set it up. Okay, this is it. So now we have a working Redux on our system. Now we have to add the add-on on the Redux search score. To do that, we're gonna go to the URL. This already been shared on the documentation. So now let's just start step by step guide from this one. So before installation, uh, this is a package. I mean, this is a resource to install the reader source code. After you've done that, just go to this one. This add the open AI key. this one okay um before doing that you have to uh, clone this github file on your on your machine okay because we can put these files on the resource code Let's just install the OpenAI package. So, for those of you who are already installed Redash, start from this step, okay? Focus on installing the add-on on your first code. Okay, the next package would be the React icons in React syntax highlighter. These are just packets that are going to be used on the front end of the chat application. This one helps you access React icons for your front end. And this one gives you highlighting, uh, styling, this uh, styling structure for your front end application. So the chat has some highlighting that it used to highlight some codes. So that's why I use this package. So just install this package. Does need uh, good internet connection, so make sure to have in good internet connection for the Redash installation. Um. Okay, since I already installed the file. Uh, the folder name is also descriptive. So if you see on the client's folder, then the app folder, then the components folder, just copy this one. It's also the guidance also exists on the with me. Here, you can see here. 
the installation set could be the chat folder entirely. This particular uh, path is also exists on the source code. So the clients folder, the apps folder, the components folder, here just paste the chat folder. Okay. Let me just paste it from here. Clients. Okay. The next step would be uh, we copy we copy this the front end part of the add-on. Now let's just paste the back end part. So in the readers handlers folder, let's copy the chat with py. All what I'm doing is specified on the readme. Okay. So go back to your readers folder folder and not, not here on the handlers folder dash three dash here then handlers folder then just paste the template py so while i'm here there's one thing that i want to show you when you install the git the readers uh, github repo you might not see the root git folder but if you just click um, show hidden files if you unpick that, there would be a .git folder. So when you uh, push this file, if you have to delete the .git folder, okay? When you push it on the, your frontend, I mean, on the organization repo, make sure to delete that one. So because everything that, first of all, it, it might not be even, uh, it might not be able to make it, uh, it might throw an error when you push this source code without deleting this folder to the new organization repo because this particular git uh, folder is redirecting to the redash source code github repo so make sure to delete that one create a new initialize a new git and push it to the organization okay just feel like i need to mention it okay so I think we have done the two steps. The next step would be to go to this particular index.jx JSX file and paste this line of code and this one. So go to your application area, then application layout, and this one, the index.jsx. Here, just paste this file line of code, then this one, the next. So it's similar with that one, there's only new addition, that is to access the chat box. So either you can add, uh, you can just copy this line of code and add it at the middle, or I'm just gonna simply replace this one entirely. Okay. Now the chat box is added on the front end. Now to see, I think oh, I'm done with all the, if there's other on the service, we have to specify the connection, the front end code is added, the back end is added on the handlers folder. Now we have to um, add the connection between the front end and the back end so they can read each other uh, information. So we, I have already told you on the service folder is where you specify the Axios URLs to request and request anything to the backend. So let's specify for this chat app. So for this chat application, there is uh, the URL is specified with this one. So up on the service folder here, you have to create, it says, what the command says, it recreate chat. JS. So let's create here in file. So do JS. Just paste this code. 
uh, we haven't initialized this one on our backend API. This is what we're gonna do next. So on the Haltrans handlers folder api.py, we have to specify specify the API URL. So let's go back to the handlers folder in the redash. First, let's import the handlers chat.js that we in uh, chat.py back in file we added before this one. After we did that, we just initialize the back in URL. Okay, here just go to the openai.com, which will give you the OpenAI web server and just log in uh, for free. You can find API keys. Okay, so just to run the other one, the free API key is enough. And the first, I give you the payable keys. So here it says on the readme under the find the API dot API exit function. And under that, copy this one. So, which is this one? You can find it online 109. So, just paste. Now, I think we added every information that we needed on the front end. The other thing that you have to do is after you get the open API key, make sure to uh, name it with this particular naming since uh, add on is created with that name. So, uh, is using this particular environment URL, so just uh, initialize. If you want to change the name, you also have to go to the Redash add-on chats code and change the, this name. Yes, just uh, instead of doing that, just simply make sure the name is similar. Um, I'm just going to grab my open API key from. Since I already have the key, I'm just gonna copy this one. This is here. Okay, I think we're done with the package and the chat add-on installation. We done everything. Just to give you an overview of the code, what the backing is doing for the chat, right? So it's just a simple uh, chatting application with OpenAI. So basically, the backend has the dispose functionality where it will accept it will uh, accept a question from a user and return uh, a response to the user using the chat API uh, functionality. So this is the OpenAI functionality where you can ask a question to the model, and the model will uh, return a response for the question. So it's just a simple. Uh, function that you can find on the documentation of OpenAI. This is how uh, you can access the model, pass the question for the model, and the model will return uh, the response. It's just a simple uh, structure for accessing the model. Uh, I'm accessing the If you want to change the environment naming, like I told you, you can you also have to change the name here. Uh, the other thing would be this is our back in Flask API for this add on. The other thing would be this one, the Axios. I oh, know no, that's the Axios. Okay. I'm sure you understand this one, right? The chat resource. Whenever this API slash chat URL is accessed, the chat resource fun functionality will be, in this case, it's a class, will be triggered. Which is this one? It automatically will provide this functionality. Uh, for so for the front end, let's talk about the front end. What I did on the front end. So the front end function is found on this chat folder. So I'm using this also for the add-on. Specify the CSS to style the chat UI. Let's just use this a simple uh, CSS. 
we're not going to talk about that one, but we'll talk about this here. So basically, I'm using the React function and it's like use state mm, to uh, store data temporarily for displaying the request between the backend and the frontend. Uh, if you have a question, we can ask me here, but it's a simple React Hub component for uh, displaying the user's opening AI model response on the front end. So it will grab the information that it gets from the front end, I mean, from the back end, from the model, and it will display it here. So I'm using just React functionalities here, and I'm tempor temporarily saving the chat history on the use state functionality of React uh, on the chat history array. So currently it's put it on the use state, use state. Uh, if you don't know it, it's just uh, gives you a temporary storage. So uh, as long as this chat box is running on the web server currently, it will display without removing the history there. But if you refresh that component, you will lose all the data. So currently the chatting history is not saved on the database, which you should you guys should do. Currently the data, the conversation between the open AI and the user is currently in this chart are done is put React. But the right way would be it should be put it on the database. So whether someone refresh the component the web server page or not, the data always should be fetched. Okay, so I think you guys have a good understanding of what the hunting is doing. It's literally saving the chat history, passing the position of the user in accessing the backend here. When someone click right uh, the where was it? Okay, this one. This is where someone will put their question about some query or anything. So when that is done. The function will be called this the handler function. The handler function, which we will edit here, this one. The handler function, uh, every time you click the enter, you write the question and you click enter. This is the keyboard key for enter, it's found on the number 13. So when you click enter, it will automatically trigger this function, and this function will put first the user's question on this chat history array because the question also needs to be saved with the answer then it will call the chat with open ai function which is this one this one will access the backend code as a user's qu question to the backend and it will accept uh, wait for the response of the chat api and that response will be put on the chat history and that chat history again will be displayed here on the front end so this is basically what the chat add-on is doing right now. Now let's just display it on our Redash. So now what we have done is we have installed new packages. The add-on is not currently in. So when you install a new add-on, I mean any package for on the source code, you always have to start. You won't see the changes right away. You have to do this thing. You have to uh, run these three codes again. On the installation part, we we have done the yarn, the make build and make compose, then make up right. So you have to start from yarn and repeat the process again. So it can dictate the new changes that's made on the source code. So every time you install some package, make sure to run yarn. This is the changes you have to do that. Then make compose. The makeup. If everything is done correctly, it will show your changes on the web server. We build. So, running this command every time you make a joint can be tiresome, but that, but it will get uh, much easier every time you do it. But there is no other option. Currently, you have to run everything. This is a change on the source code. So while we wait with this one, if you have any question, you can raise hand. Uh, 
Okay, Jabez, go ask. What was the last thing you did to uh, restart the UI? I did, I start from Yarn. Uh, okay, after finishing all the setup? After you uh, do all the setup and everything, start from the step, from the Yarn step here. Okay. Or let me just write it here as well. I can do that. So every time you make a new change, then you do this one and then make up. You have to run these four commands to see the change. Um, on the source code binion, there, uh, I don't think there is uh, the Redux is the state management usually used on the React on the React side. So I don't think they are using Redux on the source code, but they are using uh, on the back end. I think yeah, they are using Salary there. Uh, they are using Cypress on the front end. But if you want to uh, add a state management tool. You're welcome to do that. Hillary, you can speak okay my my question is uh is there any like do you have tests for for all this or any uh, are we supposed to write any tests and what can we use is it cypress or uh, anything else yeah you you should use the source code testing tools so for the react cypress is used to test every component that you're gonna create that's created or so use a Cypress tool anyway. For the reduce the backend, it's um, okay. There is testing for let's just see that the, the salary is not a testing tool, it's a asynchronous to handle tests well. So that's different for but for testing there are different test cases that are made for the backend using Python, which you can uh, go ahead and check out. So for the handler folder, there are things that are done to, to test each route is doing as supposed to. And from what we can see, it's a Python code that is used for the testing. You can explore that. So for every component back in the API that you create, if you have the time for the submission, you can create your testing as well. So uh, just to talk about there would be a tutorial for salary, but just to talk about what salary can do is it gives you uh, asynchronous hand, handling of requests. So we have this too much request APIs which are going to be accessed by a lot of users. So one user doesn't have to wait for another user to finish a request to ask a request for it. That's how. That's not the current situation. Everyone can ask at the same time, but a response will come back to our question, a specific question, uh, the right way directly. So that's happening because it's asynchronous method of handling requests. It doesn't. You don't have to wait for another request to end to ask you to uh, trigger a request. So the similar purpose, where there is uh, too much users for your application, you need to have an asynchronous way of handling requests. So that's the purpose of CMR. It's an important thing to have when you create application that's going to be used with a lot of users. 
Okay, I think we're done with the controls. Now let's just say make up. Okay, now let's just refresh the redash. You should be able to see the add on. Sometimes it needs uh, more than once to ref refreshing. So um, when you make sure, maybe uh, remove the history of the redash and do the refreshing again, okay? Yeah, it happens sometimes. So this is the add-on. You can see it here. It will be added like this. So this is the chat UI that is created for the add-on, which you can free uh, to style it better. But for this one, now we can ask the OpenAI. If the key is working, it should be able to answer me a question. So this just starts me saying hi to the module. It's answering. Now let me ask you a SQL query. So I'm going to SQL query. Or creating a table. gives me so i can copy the code so like that so this is a add-on purpose this is what the add-on looks like you can have the conversation with the, the module about the data about i mean right now there's no connection with the data but uh, this is what the add-on is doing for as a starter course okay so this is all about the add-on. If you have any more questions or if any more questions, you can go ahead and ask. Hey, Javis. Okay, can you tell us a little bit about the data that you shared us? Because uh, uh, are we going to use all the data uh, for the dashboard? I mean, I haven't shared any data here on the add-on. Are you asking the add-on data or? On the add-on, I mean on the technical content for the... Uh... Yeah, currently the add-on doesn't have any data. It's just making a simple a conversation with the module. So there is no uh, data I shared. It just accepts user information. There is where was the backend code. Yeah, I understand. What I mean is that for the project, for the for this yeah, week's for the project, project, when you pass the user's question, the model should also get the context of the data, which is the one that shares for you on the documentation. So as a context, you have to pass that data to the model. So now the model doesn't only have information about the already existing information that it has. It has additional information about the data. Now, whatever the information, whatever the question a user asks it, it will answer based on that data as well. Now, this all this info response I'm getting is by the information the model already has, by the already existing information the model already been trained on. This is how it's answering me right now. But for the additional specific data, you have to pass that data as a context to the model. How you can pass context in modeling? you can refer all the references that has given to you on the documentation talk about passing context information to the llm which if you which you will get it it exists it's a lot of information on that one so you will pass that data as a context for the llm so the llm will not only access its own information it will also access that data information and it will answer the user question based on that So you get it right. So uh, when someone get a use in a SQL or a, a code, so if there is this option, the query option will give you on the redash. You can put a query and it will visualize that what's redash. That's right. You give it an SQL data. You can access a source code or something like that. So that data will redash access when you write query on the data. It will visualize the data. That data you have to put on a link. A user can copy paste that SQL and use it here to visualize. This is the first step to do 
the project. But if you have, if you want to make it more better, uh, you can also connect the LLM as a personal assistant. This is just an idea that I'm going to give you. So when someone has a question saying, I want to visualize from this table, this functionality on the dashboard, you can order a LLM to access the redash functionality entirely and make the SQL query itself by, by connecting with the backend and visualize the data for you here on the redash. That could be hard, but it's possible to do. But for the first start, you can work on passing the data to the LLM and whatever user asks a question, a SQL query question on that data, the LLM could answer. I know I broadened my answer, but I hope that's a great job. Is. Hilary, go ahead. Hilary, go ahead. So, so you are, uh, if I can remember earlier, I told you is a schema to 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 make the LLM know how 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 our data is structured. So, um, how how is that done there? Like, we we have the CSV files, and uh, how do we get that to to the LLM? As is it part of this? So you have to access the data from the data from the sorry, I think my voice is sorry. My voice is coin. Um, you have to find a way to access the, you can connect the Redash with uh, you, with your data, right? That's possible. So once you connect with your data, you have to access from the back end of the source code, the Redash source code, and you have to find a way to access that data and pass it to the LLM. The LLM back end is also found on the research source code. The functionality of dashboard of the Redash is also found on the Redash source code on the handlers folder. So every time you can find some kind of an event when your data is loaded specifically this recent data, you can make sure that you are redirected to the LLM backend maybe and make it access that data. I hope that's clear. So you this part has to be done on the backend the algorithm, how you can fetch the data using the backend code should be done on the backend. So, yeah. Uh, so, so yeah, my not, uh, it, it has answered some part of it. Uh, my concern was that we, we have the CSV files. Uh, so uh, I'm assuming you're going to save them in the in Postgres. And then, so it, it will, my, I was asking the, how the LLM is going to to know my my how my database is st structured, or uh, or is it part of the backend that is that wasn't part of the. Track? So you can fetch the data from the Postgres on the Redis source on the backend. You you can give uh, how the Redis. I mean, let's say you connect the backend, the Redash with the Postgres database. On the backend, it means there's a connection between uh, the backend of the Redash and the front, the front end, right, with the Postgres. It means there is an URL who access that data, that schema, and lets you display it on the Redash dashboard by making queries and stuff like that. So, if there's a, that mechanism where you can access that source code from some Postgres or other database and display it on the Redash, it means you have the mechanism to to face that data, that schema data on the Redash. So all you have to do is now you have this functionality where you have the access to access the OpenAI model. Now you have, all you have to do is on the backend connect those two, the model backend and the already existing Redash backend which connect with other database connections and do the query, the dashboard, the visualization on the Redash. This is the existing functionality of Redash. Now you have to just pick that functionality 
by going through the source code, how it makes the connection. And you have to just make sure also that in that connection, the model is also part of it, so it can access the data on the reader source code, on the reader dashboard. So you get it now? Yes, that answers it. Thank you. Okay. Just to say one more thing again here, I'm going to repeat it, but I'll say it again. So just the current Redash, how it works is it accepts the data, and it will give you this queries option to do a split query, and it will visualize. This is the existing Redash source code. This is how the Redash source code works behind the scene. Now you will have another behind the scene, which is the LLM. All you have to do is make a connection between those two, and the LLM will be part of the Redash architecture, which means it will access all the data, like the query, the visualization of Redash does when you connect the data to it. Now, if that's uh, if the LLM has that information, all you have to do is, or a user have to do is ask a question to the LLM. LLM will be uh, information full to answer any question regarding the current state of the Redash on your local machine. Okay, so Abdul, uh, someone was reading her before. Yeah, Abu Akar, sorry. Go ahead. Okay, uh, thank you. Okay, so it's not a question per se, but uh, I just I just had a connectivity issue and I missed some parts of the chunks. And, uh, is it possible to summarize? Uh, the yeah, one part yeah, it's part possible. Or okay, thank you. Uh, where did you uh, lose the connection now, Walker? Maybe I can start from there. Where uh, in which part did you lose the connection during the presentation, now, Walker? Oh, on the add-on part. The add-on part. The, uh, yeah, yeah. So, do you have uh, a working redash? Ah, uh, yes, yes, yeah, I do. It's work. It's working on Docker. Great. So it's working. All you have to do is start from the. I don't. Know. So there is a readme. This particular uh, GitHub link is found on the documentation to install the admin. So just follow this add-on. Start from installing the three packages and following this step to uh, make sure to clone this file first. So this file you have to put copy paste it on the source code. So on your working Redash source code, make sure to copy paste these files. Follow these steps, they are very descriptive. There's nothing you really miss. So, on the index file, make sure to initialize the front end codes here. The access connection with the back end and front end happen in the service folder in the client app directory. And then, this one you will have to copy paste one, this one also. Then, after you've done with this in uh, steps, uh, go to the openai.com. Uh, website, which is the uh, official openai.com, I mean, openai website. There you can sign up for free and they will give you uh, a free openai key. Uh, the free openai key is limited in some to some extent, but for this add on, it will work perfectly fine. So that is the other step. Once you're done with this step, you have to run this three uh, to see the changes on the Redux source code. You have to run the yarn command. I don't know if you can see it on the chat. You can see it on the chat for commands. The yarn make build, make compose build, then make up. You can see it on the chat, how worker. Okay, so just anyway, just run the yarn make build. And every time you make a change on the source code, Make build, make compose no. build, then make up these four commands, run them again. And then when you refresh your dashboard, you will see the change. 
So if everything works uh, perfectly so fine, you should be able to see this icon. Okay, so, uh, sorry. Yeah, yeah go okay. ahead. So after copy pasting this uh, on our installation of Redash, probably in the Docker, right? Yeah, in the Docker. Okay, so after uh, I, we pasted the plugin and we have to rebuild the Redash then to get it working. That's exactly, that's, you have to rebuild right. it. Yeah, okay. the reason why you're running the yarn command is because you are installing new packages. So, because you're doing that, you have to start from the yarn command. Okay, uh, so I, I also missed a little bit about uh, the React part. What is the what are we doing on React part? If the, from what I've seen, the, it's, it seems like the plugin works well. So do we need to desi redesign the chat window or what, what is it? You can use this one, but if you want to make it more, uh, if you want to change the user interface, you can, uh, if you can see here on the, the less code, says the code, you can style it more, you can change the color, they have different uh, designs for the UI. So if you have time, you can do that. But maybe don't waste too much time there uh, because that's not the most okay. important thing one. But you can make it more, the user, you can change the user interface. The chat folder that is going, yeah, that we're going to put copy paste has this styling list file. Right now it's displaying this style sheet for the user interface. You can change different functionalities here to make it more different. But other than that, the, at the end of the day, there would be a place for the user to ask a question and it's supposed to be displayed on some interface. Okay, so okay. Uh, it, it's, it's pro, it, pro, it was uh, uh, mentioned in the document that uh, we need uh, some kind of proficiency in React. Uh, is it uh, on the, for, the, for this specific thing or is it needed for other? This chat uh, add-on almost covered everything regarding to the React. So others are make it more advanced. You don't, you don't have to worry about that one much. So uh, I would personally would advise everyone to focus on the backend, making sure that LLM get the information about the data. If you have time, you can go back with the making the react you can make it better than this one and like i mentioned before right now the chat between the open ai the model and the chat is not saved the right way would be to save it on a database so with the, that database has to be maybe the redash their database you have to figure that out right now the chat is uh, put it temporarily but again it should be your first priority shouldn't be that as well just for, for now for the first steps, focus on how you can fit the data to the LLA. Okay, so uh, another one question. So okay. while uh, using the OpenAI key or connecting the Redash to LLM, do we actually uh, have to expose all the data or as I think in the morning, yeah, the, yeah, but well mentioned that you only need to expose uh, the skeleton or the columns. Uh, so can you say something about how you should go about it on that, implementing that with OpenAI? You mean about the data that you're going to fish from the database, right? To do the query. Yes. Yeah, right now when you connect your Redash with the Postgres database, the, the Redash will access that data to give you the option to query it and visualize it. So once you connect that, now you have to figure out when the, currently Redash does that part. Now how you have to understand how Redash is doing that. So every time there's a connection with an, a database source called data source, like Postgres or others, there are different options on the Redash. Whatever the connection you made, you have to figure out a way to face that data when someone connected their data with the Redash. And that data would be a table. So all you have to do, 
like here we said, if you if you are referring to that, has the data to the LLM nodes, which means the LLM has the table data of that data. So how LLM is already trained with SQL. So it doesn't, as long as it gets the data, it can do the analyzing by its previous understanding. So as long as it gets the data, whatever you ask it on that particular data, it will be able to do. You don't have to do additional uh, thing to, to make LLM understand the SQL. So basically, the whole data is given to the LLM. If you find a way to make sure that data is passed to the LLM, LLM will do the rest. So if you if you're able to do that and make sure the LLM uh, is able to answer the question with the user, I would uh, the next step would be now this when you if you done this one the answering will happen on the chat user interface right, but if you want to make yeah. it more advanced. You can make the LLM also directly to access the queries in the dashboard functionality free dash. And when user asks a question, instead of answering the displaying the answer on the chat, you can also give it the option to display the visualization on the redash dashboard. That would be amazing if you're able to reach that level as well. If you make the LLM access the queries, do the querying and visualize for you on the Redash dashboard, it will be like a personal assistant for the Redash dashboard on your machine. It will be great if you can manage that one as well. Okay, thank you. Okay, uh, Salam. Yeah, at one point you mentioned uh, you mentioned we have to clone a particular repo. Which repo is that? Uh, I'm sorry, I didn't hear that one. So at some point you mentioned we clone a particular repo for this project. Can you make reference to that again? You mean the organization you create for your team or? Uh, no, 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 no. While installing, uh, while working on Redash. Yeah, and when I'm you just... were doing your presentation, you, you mentioned a particular repo that was to be cloned. Oh, yeah. Yeah, this one. This is the only okay, okay, I didn't I did. okay, okay. Thank you. Yeah. Just I want uh, I'm I think most of you will not need this one, but just for those of you who are groupers, make sure to remove the dot git file when you push the source code on your uh, repo, okay? On your person on the organization repo. Otherwise, every push that you make will be will fail probably. I don't think the resource code will automatically accept your push, but it will be directed to the redash source code. Not to do that, make sure to remove that git and initialize it for the organization. Anyway, uh, is there another question? Okay, so um, should I assume everything's clear at least to some extent? I think it improves. We draw the vector that have is constant play. So in this round, I think yeah, we also mentioned it the, in the morning. Uh, you don't have to worry about vector database for this project. But knowing the vector database will help for the future projects because we will be using it a lot. But right now, the database sources would be others here. Miniam hopes that's clear. And so just give me a reaction that you understand. So for today, make sure to do this installation on your machine, including the other one. If you can manage that, you will have time for later work from me, okay? If you have any questions, you can please DM me directly. I can help later, okay. How about the API key? For Mahbuba, for the chat add-on, you can use the free API key. You just go ahead, sign up on the OpenAIQ platform, which I shared on the readme file on the add-on. That for tomorrow, 
and for the other work that you're gonna do, Fakarta will share will be uh, a key will be shared for each group. Fakarta will share a paid key, but for the add-on, the free one will do. Okay, so I'm gonna end the tutorial. Thank you everyone for joining in.